Hello, it's time for the third in the Creating a Payara Service series, this time covering how to add configuration data to a service. By adding configuration data, I mean adding the ability for the service to store data about itself and persist these to the Payara domain.xml. As a pre-warning, I'll be continuing with the service I've created in the previous two video blogs, so you may find yourself missing some context if you've skipped them. First off, we will need to add a new dependency to our POM file. Open it up and add the Glassfish internal API as a dependency. This will give us access to some additional classes that we'll need to add our configuration data. With that initial step done, Let's start off with creating the interface that will act as the means of storing our runtime configuration data. Give it a name and make sure it's placed in the same package as our service. The name that you give it is how it will be defined in a domain.xml, so it must be unique. The name, however, won't appear exactly as specified here. It will be converted to lowercase and have dashes placed between the words like this. Add the at configured annotation to define the interface as a configuration element and extend it with the config bean proxy and config extension interfaces. Next, we'll define our attributes. As you may remember from the previous blog, our as admin command took three parameters, first name, surname, and full. For this example, we'll store the first name and surname. Create an empty getter and setter for the two attributes, like so, and add the at attribute annotation to denote them as attributes. You can define default values for the attributes here like this. You may remember from the previous blog that we also set default values for some of the as admin command parameters, but we'll come back to that shortly. For this example, I'm also going to add in some extra validation. Use the at pattern annotation to specify a regular expression to validate the attribute against. If a parameter is passed that does not meet this regular expression, it will be rejected. For this example, I'll make it so the names can only contain letters. With that done, we'll need to edit our as admin command to reflect these changes. First up, we'll need to inject our new configuration interface. We'll also then want to remove the default value for the surname parameter here. If we were to leave it, then the value we stored in the domain.xml would be overwritten each time this as admin command was called. Next, to have our as admin command write to the domain.xml file, we need to create a transaction in the execute method. Within a try block, call the apply method of the config support class with a single config code interface as a parameter like this. Then, override the run method, defining a new variable of our configuration interface. For this example, I'll just throw the property veto and transaction failure exceptions. Within the run method, Use an if statement to check whether or not a value has been provided for a parameter before using the set method of the attribute in our configuration interface. Return null to complete the method and add our injected interface variable as the second parameter of the apply method. Catch any exceptions to round out the try block and we now have an as admin command that will set the name parameters in our domain.xml. 
edit our print statements to make use of our new configuration data. Then build and test out our changes. That's it for this vlog. Thanks for watching.